Good morning, ladies and gentlemen of the media. Thank you for joining us here on uh, such a sad occasion for us here at the Hawaii Police Department. We appreciate your interest and in, uh, covering this story. And uh, I know you all have busy schedules. Uh, the chief will make some comments, some opening statements. And uh, I would ask that you identify your uh, name and organization when you ask the question and uh, the chief will respond. We have kind of a limited time window here because the chief obviously is very busy as all, all our officers are and personnel. So we would ask that you keep uh, your questions to maybe one question a person. So with that, uh, I present the police chief here of the Hawaii Police Department, Chief Paul Ferrer. Okay, before we get started, good morning, everyone. <clears throat> I want to apologize if I do become emotional during this presentation. Um, as I've told several people today, this is probably the worst day in my 36-year career as a police officer. <clears throat> Having been up since 4 o'clock yesterday morning, getting a call at 10 o'clock last night of an officer being shot, and having responded to the hospital and meeting the family and the officers that were involved. And it's not only myself that was involved, but all the other officers that were out in the field searching for the suspect, the dispatchers, and all the family members that were affected. At this time, I would like to provide you with the information contained in the media release that was posted earlier this morning concerning this event. Hawaii Island Police are investigating the murder of a police officer who was fatally shot while on a traffic stop on a vehicle on Highway 11 in the area of Kukui Camp Road, Mountain View, Hawaii. On July 17, 2018, approximately 9.47 p.m., officers conducted a traffic stop on a vehicle bearing Hawaii license number ZGG 879 being operated by a 33 year old male identified as Justin Waikiki of a last known address in Las Vegas who was wanted on an outstanding no bail warrant and multiple all points bulletins. Upon officer's arrival and approaching the vehicle, the suspect, Justin Waikiki, exited the driver's front seat and fired multiple shots from what is believed to be a handgun, striking Officer Bronson Kaimana Kailoa in the neck and leg era. Officer, other officers at the scene immediately returned fire. However, the suspect Waikiki was able to flee into the brush on foot. Highway 11 was closed down while police searched for the suspect and process the scene for evidence. Officer Kaliloa was transported by the Hawaii Fire Department medic unit to the Hito Medical Center emergency room where the medical trauma team began treating his life-threatening injuries, preparing him for surgery. Officer Kaliloa underwent surgery. However, life-saving efforts were unsuccessful and he was pronounced dead at approximately 12.45 a.m. <clears throat> Officer Kaliloa, a 10-year veteran of the Hawaii Police Department, leaves behind his wife and three children. The suspect is identified as a Justin Joshua Waikiki and is described as 5 feet 11 in height, approximately 145 pounds, and was last seen wearing a white t-shirt and dark colored jacket. Waikiki is considered to be armed and dangerous and should not be approached. Anyone with information on his whereabouts is asked to call the police immediately at 911 or 935 3311 or those who prefer to remain anonymous may do so by calling the Island Wide Crime Stoppers number at 9618300. The criminal investigation section is continuing this investigation 
And anyone with information may also contact Detective William Brown at 808-961-2384 or by email at william.brown at hawaiicounty.gov. Before moving on to the suspect, I want to put a face to the name of this fallen officer. He stands behind me in a video, Bronson Kaimana Kaliloa, to show how senseless his death was by bringing the personal side of his life to bear. He was a loving husband to a wife of 23 years, a father to three children, two sons and a daughter. He was also a loving son to his parents, who also reside in Hawaii Island. Officer Kali Loa was only 46 years old. He was a 1990s graduate of the Waimea High School, Waimea, Kauai. He was hired by the Hawaii Police Department on August 1, 2008. He started his career in the South Koala Patrol Division and he transferred to the Puna Division in 2010. In 2014, Officer Kaliloa was honored by his peers at a very young career age as being selected as the Officer of the Year for the Puna District. This was an officer, this was a father, a son, a husband. Put a face to the name. Now I go to the suspect. Mr. Waikiki, the reason that they were seeking him out, he had a no bail warrant for revocation of his bail conditions. He has a total of 37 prior arrests for various offenses, which included 16 convictions. Three of those were felony convictions that included firearm offenses, drug offenses, and forgery. He had four misdemeanor convictions assault, traffic violations, and contempt of court, and he had nine other petty misdemeanor or violations of orders. Our prior address, the recent, most recent address of Mr. Waikiki listed was an address in Las Vegas, Nevada. However, he, has, he is a resident or of Hawaii Island. He has lived in Lower Puna, Upper Puna, Hamakua, Hilo, so various locations around the island. At this time, I will go ahead and entertain your questions. Yes, Chief, is there any indication that the um, suspect was struck by any return fire from the officers at the scene? No, there wasn't. John? John Brad, Tribune Herald. Um, how many officers discharge their weapons and what are their duty status right now? As with any officer involved incident or any critical incident, two officers were involved with discharging the weapons. All officers have been placed on administrative leave with pay pending the outcome of the investigation and pending a check of their well-being. Anytime an officer is involved in a critical incident, we're concerned for their well-being, especially in an incident where a death of a brother officer has occurred. Anyone else? Sir. Now, the traffic stop that you indicated, the officers recognized him and saw the vehicle, which is something expired on the vehicle. Excuse me, who's this? Lisa Kubota from Hawaii News Now. The reason the traffic stop was initiated was officers recognized him as a wanted person, or did the vehicle do something wrong, or was there a traffic violation? What's okay. the reason for the, stop, okay. the traffic stop initially? Okay, Lisa, I apologize. I didn't realize that you were on the, on the phone here. Uh, let me go ahead and address your question first. Her question is, was, what was, basically, what was the reason for the stop? Correct, Lisa? Yes, correct. Okay. Information that our officers received was that he, is known, he was known to be wanted and he was being sought by police, actively sought. We received information that he was on Highway 11 on the shoulder of the highway. 
so the officers proceeded there, found his vehicle on the side of the road and went, when they approached him. Does that right, answer your question? You. Okay. Sir? Yes, so this obviously is terrible. Can you give us uh, some background about how rare or not it is and when the last time was that either an officer or was shot and then an officer perhaps killed? Off the top of my head, I apologize. I don't have the exact dates of when our officers passed. We, our most recent passing was Officer Kenneth Kilipio, which I believe was in the 80s. Prior to that was Officer Shige Jichaku. Um, he was, excuse me, Kenneth Kilipio was in the 90s. Kenneth, uh, Officer Shige Jichaku was in the 80s. Prior to that, uh, we had two other officers that had passed in, I believe, the 50s or 40s. And I apologize for not having that information right off the top of my head. That information is on our wall, our memorial, that stands in front of the Hawaii Police Department's patrol division. A wall that I had hoped would never be added to. And like I said, this has been the worst event in my career. Chief Ferreira, were any of them shot to death. I don't believe any were, but looking through the police week, there really isn't much detail surrounding the deaths of any of them. We've had several officers that have been wounded in the line of duty. Most recently at the beginning part of this year when Officer Cavalli was shot in the Puna District. Prior to that, we had two officers, Officer Govea and Officer Hatana being shot in Hilo. All of them survived their wounds. This is the first time in my 36 year career history that I know an officer has been shot and killed. Chief Tom Fretanaro from Hilo Christian Broadcasting. Do um, you have specific instructions for the public? <clears throat> uh, there are several officers, retired officers, that carry for the uh, Riosa Firearms Act. Any specific instructions for those people that do conceal carry regarding this individual? How do you want it handled? My instructions is to everyone out there that does not wear a uniform, does not wear a badge, is not an active sworn law enforcement officer for the state, federal, or county jurisdictions. This man is considered armed and dangerous. Do not approach him. Do not attempt to apprehend him. Call 911, call, the, call 3311 if you have to. Text to 911 if you have to. Get us the information, let us take care of it. We have officers out in the field since last night actively searching. We have assistance from our federal partners in the FBI, DEA, HSI. We have received offers for assistance from all of our state law enforcement partners and all of our federal agencies. Chief, Chief Roscoe on AO TV. The area where the event took place, is that still a primary search area or is it expanded? Right now it's a primary search area. We're also searching systematically areas that he was, he was known to frequent, areas that he may have been before. So it's a concerted effort around the island. Chief, uh, especially in Puna, you guys have been spread pretty thin because of the response to the lava and, and, and things like that. Uh, how does this affect your operations at the moment? And on a more personal level, how is this affecting you? As far as our operations, we will carry on as we have before. We will respond to all calls for service. Our officers are diligent in their, and coming out last night, whether they were on day off, as soon as they got the call or they heard the word, they were out, out in the field assisting. No questions asked, no orders being given. They showed up in uniform, ready to work. As far as affecting me, I am the chief, and I am responsible for this officer's life, and I take it very seriously. I had to meet with his wife last night and his father at the hospital, and it was very difficult. But we will persevere, and we will do what we need to do to make sure that the community is safe.